What is up everybody, Dan Dan the Fireman here, and we're gonna listen to Bike and Bird talk about the new 2819 models that he's predicting will be coming out. Uh, we both talked about this kind of stuff in the past, but they're gonna be releasing these really soon, so this is a really cool, nice little insight of what uh, the 2019 models might be. So go ahead and check them out, and uh, we'll see you guys later. brains out of the dyna again today uh, it's not too bad right now it's only about 92 degrees at this point which sounds really bad but considering we're expected to get up to 103 today uh, i decided to get out early and go for a ride a uh, question i've been getting asked a lot recently is going to be today's topic and that is uh my predictions for the 2019 harleys now funny enough we actually went over this specific topic last week on the between two wheels podcast i'll include a link to that full episode down in the description i uh, highly recommend going and checking that out we've been getting tons of positive feedback and i really enjoy doing it so uh, if you want to go and get the full opinion of both myself roadblock and uncle ken Go ahead and swing by and check that out. So a lot of talk around the 2019s has been regarding the uh, the live wire. Now, I believe that the live wire is going to be released in 2019. At least that's what Harley is saying and confirmed. But I don't think it's going to be released in this 2019 release, in 2018. I think it's going to be like a April, May time frame of 2019. Is uh, My question, though, is what is it going to be? I know that they've released the, the concept a while back and I think that bike looks badass. I think it's gorgeous. But, man, I just hope that the technology is right because if it's not with Harley's price tag, I believe that thing will fall flat on its face. It's got to be priced right, and it's got to have the right technology in it. I want to see at least 150-mile range, and I want to see it sub uh, 15 grand. I think 15 grand will be pushing it, but uh, I could see people paying 15 grand for that bike just for just because it's a Harley and it's you know one of the first American manufactured or American branded electric bike, so to speak. But outside of that, what are we going to see this year? So in case you didn't know, Harley did trademark three. Uh, names. Now, these aren't necessarily tied to be uh, bikes, but that's what everyone's speculating. That's what everyone's thinking. Now, the three names are the Bronx, the Pan America, and the 48X. Now, obviously, the 48X is probably going to be a bike. Um, it's pr if they follow along with the, the other X models, we're probably looking at suspension and brake upgrades. Probably nothing fancy. Probably another, maybe a specialty paint scheme or paint color or something like that but uh, i don't expect it to be anything completely out of the the ordinary now the pan america and the bronx are what really interest me uh one thing that i that i thought of is the v-rod now everyone loved the v-rod the sales said otherwise but i think that it was a little bit ahead of its time i feel like now more people are talking about the v-rod than when it was actually out and in production harley has this habit of uh taking by out of production for a year, maybe two, and then bringing them back completely redesigned. For example, the Road Glide used to be a hideous monstrosity, brought it back as one of the best looking baggers they've ever produced, in my opinion. Now, when I think Bronx, I think urban, I think tough, I think just, uh, just super adapted to the streets, uh, aggressive. That's what I think of when I hear Bronx. At the same time, that could just be, honestly, I think it's either between a V-Rod remake or a more urbanized Sportster, something like a uh, like a street tracker, kind of like what I was going to build the Sportster to be. They could maybe some some very tall shocks. They kind of did it with the Roadster, but I think maybe they'll just take it a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I know we just got uh, a refresh of the Sportsters with the 1200 iron and the 48 Special, but that was just paint parts. That's I don't believe that was a big enough uh, refresh of the Sportster line to justify it as being a refresh. I think we're going to see big changes in the Sportster line this year. I would love to see a, uh, a new motor in the Sportsters. They've been using the same motor since 86, uh, but just different configurations. I don't think we'll see it this year, but I think we will see a shrunk down miniature version of the Milwaukee 8 in something like a Sportster frame within the next two to three years. But we're talking 2019, so that's I do not believe that we will see that come this year. Uh, one thing that I do think that we'll see is 
either a flat track style or a uh, an off-road ish like a scrambler style and i personally think that's where we're going to see the pan america a lot of people were saying that they thought it was going to be a, a touring sportster because that's one of the the bikes that they got rid of uh, recently and honestly i could see that happening i would not be surprised if the pan america is a, a touring configured sportster but i believe that with the the uh, insane amount of uh, press that indian has gotten with their ftr both the 750 and the 1200 especially after uh, travis pastrana's little stunt i believe that they have had a uh, a bullet in the chamber aimed at that particular market for quite some time now now they had the uh the the 1200 or the xr 1200 tracker or something i can't remember what it was called but we saw it at the ims uh it was it was basically an ftr competitor but i think we'll see something a little bit more official in that ftr competitor category and i personally believe that's where we'll see the pan america but going back to what i said with the uh sports to refresh i don't believe we're gonna see all three of those new trademarks if they are bikes i don't believe that we'll see all three of them in 2019 i believe that they'll hold off on some of those until the uh, 2020 release reason being with the live wire coming out mid 2019 i don't think that they'll want that amount of competition going against their own bike in that same market as far as the soft tails go uh, i don't really foresee anything happening in that department just because of the giant refresh that we saw in uh, 2018 i don't believe that there's anything that they need to change at this point the only thing i could potentially see them doing is potentially offering a 114 the street bob uh, that bike is a lot better than everyone anticipated it being but uh, i think a 114 version of that putting it uh, still under the price range of the fat bomb depending on uh, economics and stuff like that i'm sure people are are uh, crunching those numbers how it would hurt fat bob sales as opposed to selling a higher number of bikes what that works out to be but that's an option that i would like at least as a 114 street bob other than that i think we might see some new colors uh, i would really really like to see some just over the top colors in both the soft tail and the sportster line i'm talking lime green purple uh, like a bright candy red all the colors right now are pretty boring i mean they're cool you've got the denim grays and the denim reds a lot more denim but uh, i feel like to target that younger market and to just give people a bigger range of expression i believe that uh, some brighter colors should be in the color palette for this release i mean look at the challengers man they sell them in in the bright greens and the purples and the yellows all the time so i would love to see that come over to the, uh, the the Harley market. I would rock the shit out of a purple bike. But at the same time, there's a lot of people at headquarters that want to, you know, keep true to the tradition and keep true to the classics and make our bikes look 150 years old. I get it. Tradition is something that uh, is meaningful, is a part of the company. But at the same time, you got to move with the times, man. you got to branch out and do new things and do new stuff. And then moving on to the big boy bikes, the touring, I really don't anticipate too much happening there. Uh, we might see the, the CVO gray come up again i would i would love to have that gray available in more bikes i feel like that color did extremely well and uh had a lot of good feedback but at the same time i don't know if they want to even release that because that would kind of take away from the cvo exclusiveness but uh, the only thing that i really foresee happening in the touring line is maybe some some tech upgrades something like more led lights maybe led turn signals something similar to like a uh, a road rider industries or custom dynamic style of this uh, led flashbacks and things like that i don't know how that works with legalities there might be some states that uh, that don't allow those but uh, that's something that i could see them doing to uh to draw in more of the younger crowd and then maybe something like uh maybe like some tech that that indian's doing indian i don't know if you've had a chance to check out their touring bikes but uh their top level touring bikes their windshield is adjustable so literally i could hit a switch on the handlebar and this windshield will move up 
up and down. It's really cool. I think it's a really awesome feature, uh, especially for people who do both touring and city riding. If you're, you know, going around downtown and stuff like that, you don't want this big giant windshield blocking all the wind, so you can lower it down and get some more of that breeze blowing on you. But I don't know how uh, how well Indian has that patented or trademarked or what have you, or if that's something that uh, Harley is even interested in, in participating in. But there you have it, folks. Uh, that, those are my predictions, at least. I could be completely wrong. I probably will be completely wrong. But just based off of my knowledge, that's where that's where my predictions lie. So let me know down in the comments right now, what do you expect to see come the end of August? Let me know uh, if you agree with some of my statements or if you disagree. Uh, I, I want to know your opinions, guys. Also, in case you uh, did not catch last week's episode, I did announce my partnership with Alamo City Harley-Davidson. So I will be test riding all of the 2019s the day after they come out. Uh, as soon as they're able to hit the streets, I will be on those bikes making videos, making reviews for you guys to check out. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Make sure you don't miss any of those uploads. YouTube has been very wonky lately, so uh, just to make sure that you don't miss those 2019s when they come out, uh, please hit that notification bell. Other than that, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.